here and welcome back. Um, so it's been a while since we uh, since we talked about perturbation methods, and uh, in the next uh, few videos, uh, let's start talking about how some of the perturbation methods that we have discussed before, like regular perturbation and singular perturbations, uh, could be used or extended to two-level systems, uh, which occur quite uh, generically in many many applications uh, in science uh, and engineering. For instance, in the case of quantum mechanics, you might have a Hamiltonian 2 by 2, 2, by two uh, matrix which corresponds to the Hamiltonian for a system and then you want, you're interested in studying what happens if you, what happens to the eigenvalues as you perturb that Hamiltonian. Uh, a classical example could be that of a coupled uh, oscillator. So you have uh, two oscillators that are uh, moving independently at first and then you introduce a coupling between them and then what happens to the modes of the system as you vary the coupling parameter. So, uh, so, so let's start talking about these ideas and see how uh, some of the things that we've talked about in particular with regards to polynomial equations, very similar ideas can help us solve for the eigenvalues of such perturbed systems. Um, so just to make these ideas a little, more, little bit clearer, um, uh, let, let's sort of talk about two by two uh, matrices of the form. Uh, let's say you have a matrix H which is the sum of two uh, matrices, H0 plus a perturbation parameter, let's, let's call it epsilon times H1. And what we are interested is in what happens to the I. So let's say we are able to solve for the eigenvalues of the unperturbed matrix H0. And then what we want to find out is what happens to the eigenvalues as we switch on the perturbation, uh, perturbation parameter epsilon. Um, so in a physical model that's often discussed, let's say in quantum mechanics, this could be a, 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 an atom that has been exposed to an electric field, a static electric field, and then the perturbation in that case could be an electric field. Um, a classical example that we'll actually use for the purpose of this video is, is as follows. Uh, we'll consider um, which, which actually belongs to the very, which belongs to the same class of uh, systems is uh, you have uh, rigid walls then you have uh, an oscillator coupled to one of the walls with a spring constant k1 and let's say the mass is n1 so this is a simple harmonic oscillator which is coupled at one, one end of the wall and then you have another oscillator at the other end of the wall whose mass is m2 and it's coupled to the wall with a spring of spring constant k2 um, now these oscillators you can excite them independently then there is no interaction between them so uh, so, so, so another key word that comes out is we are really talking about interacting two-level systems. Um, and now what happens, what we are interested in, what happens if we sort of couple these two masses with, let's say, a coupling constant, uh, epsilon or let's call it kappa, that's kappa is more generically used, which will play the role of epsilon in this case. And what happens to the modes of the system as uh, we vary kappa, for instance. Um, now, some of the key ideas that emerge in studying uh, such a system is, um, is for instance, what happens, um, what, what happens to the eigenvalues, uh, what happens to the eigenvalues specifically in two different cases. Uh, what if the initial uh, Hamiltonian H naught had uh, eigenvalues which are different from each other? So you can have a case when the eigenvalues were non-degenerate, non-degenerate. And, and we'd have to distinguish this case from the case when you when you have when the original Hamiltonian H naught has eigenvalues which are same. So in, in this case we have degenerate eigenvalues. And what we see is that uh, in the case of degenerate eigenvalues, actually this belongs to the class of singular perturbation problems. Um, and the idea is very similar to the one that we've talked about in the in the context of polynomials. Whereas when we have non-degenerate eigenvalues, this belongs to the class of regular perturbation problems. Um, and, and the reason why, and, and it's very interesting what the reason why it, it belongs to a singular perturbation problem from both a physical point of view and from a mathematical point of view. And, and in this case, uh, from a physical point of view, it uh, it goes by many names. For instance, um, uh, what happens is when you sort of introduce a, 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 a coupling or a perturbation, then the, the, the eigenvalues that were similar separate out and this sometimes uh, this is sometimes known as um, level curves or level curves that repel each other or eigenvalues that start repelling each other and moving away from each other. So level curve repulsion, for instance. Um, 
and and, and we talk uh, about these ideas of how this comes about uh, but again uh, this essentially comes about uh, this essentially points to a, a sort of a class of problems where there is a, there is a drastic change in the character of the solutions uh, when the parameter when the perturbation parameter is epsilon is exactly zero versus when you switch on the perturbation parameter and it's and it's non and, and it is very small but non-zero and there is a drastic change in the character of the eigenvalue solution and hence such problems belong to the class of singular perturbation problems um, so we talk about these ideas uh, in, in, in these uh, set of videos and just to get started on this uh, let's write down uh, the coupled oscillator that we talked about in the form of a matrix and then in the next videos we will see how uh, how we can solve for the eigenvalues of these of that matrix exactly and how that relates to uh, how, how, how we can distinguish regular and singular perturbation from the exact solution how, how we can understand it uh, at, at a very at, at a very uh, at, at a level which can be solved exactly and then in the in the, in, the, in, in, uh, in, the, in the next part of the videos we'll actually try to solve for the eigenvalues using perturbative methods and we'll see how the ideas that we've talked about where of using different kinds of perturbation push perturbation methods when we have a regular perturbation uh, situation versus when we have a singular perturbation situation comes about so uh, so the system that we consider uh, is this we have a rigid wall and then we have a mass m1 coupled with a spring constant k1 to it and then we have another mass m2 coupled with a spring constant k2 on the other end of the rigid wall and then there's a small coupling between them let's just call it kappa so let's just write down the equation of motion for the, for both these oscillators uh, let's assume that this oscillator you displace it by an amount x1 initially and then you displace this oscillator by an amount x2 initially and let's take this to be the positive x-axis uh, then the equation of motion for the first mass will be m1 x1 double dot and here we use uh, double dot notations to denote uh, derivatives with respect to time so two dots mean two derivatives with respect to time and essentially we are writing Newton's laws of motion for uh, mass m1 so we have m1 x1 double dot, double dot equals to uh, minus k1 x1 so this is the so if you stretch it by an amount x1 then uh, this particular spring k1 will try to pull it back by uh, by by force which is k1 x1 pointing in negative x direction and likewise um, the net stretching of the spring that's coupling m1 and m2 is is of is, is of the amount x2 minus x1 and this will this will uh, try to pull the string forward it will try to pull the mass forward along the positive x direction and so that will uh, add to a force kappa times x2 minus x1 and likewise we can write the equation of motion for the second mass uh, which will be m2 x2 double dot equals um, so the second mass will be pulled back by a, a force which is uh, which is exactly the same as this one so you will have a force minus kappa x2 minus x1 and then there will there will be another force by the spring k2 which will again try to uh, push it back in a negative x direction so the next net force on this will be minus k2 x2 um, now we can write the right hand side of this in the form of a matrix um, and, uh, and, and the left hand side in the form of a vector uh, in the following way so we can uh, first of all we can divide both sides by m1 here and we can divide both sides by m2 here and then we can write this in the form of a matrix equation as follows uh, which is we have x1 double dot x2 double dot equals um, now we can combine terms which have x1 together so we have minus k1 divided by m1 and then we have minus kappa divided by m1 and then we have a term kappa divided by m1 here um, and likewise the terms that will multiply x1 on the left hand side is kappa divided by m2 uh, so kappa divided by m2 multiplies x1 and then we have minus kappa divided by m2 minus k2 divided by m2 and this matrix multiplies the vector x1 x2 so it'll be good just to check whether this sort of these are the entries of the matrix and these reduce to uh, the, the two couple set of equation that we've written above um, so, we've written, so we've written this system in the form of a 2 by 2 matrix and now let's look at this matrix and split it into two parts such that the coupling parameter starts becoming more clear where it where, where is it actually coming in so notice that the coupling parameter is kappa in this case um, and let's we'll just get rid of the figure for the time being um, and just rewrite this matrix as the, form of sum, uh, as the sum of two matrices so we have so we can write this matrix in the form of one matrix which is 
minus k1 divided by m1 and then 0 0 and then we pick up this term minus k2 divided by m2 so this we will take it take to be as our unperturbed matrix and this is because k1 divided by m1 is actually the squared uh, uh, frequency of oscillation of the first uh, simple harmonic oscillator m1 whereas uh, k2 divided by m2 is the squared frequency of oscillation of the second harmonic oscillator when both these oscillators are uncoupled from each other and then we have a perturbing matrix uh, which where, where we see the parameter kappa coming in um, so this is of the form kappa divided by m1 and then we have a term um, kappa divided by m1 on the right hand side um, and then we have a term kappa divided by m2 here. Uh, I'm sorry, this is negative, minus kappa divided by m1. And then we have plus kappa divided by m1. And then we have minus kappa divided by m2. Okay. So all we have done is we have taken this matrix and split it into two parts. Um, which look like this. So this we take to be our unquoted matrix H0. And here we see that all the entries have kappa as a parameter. So you, you might as well take it out and write this in the form 1, minus 1 divided by m1, 1 divided by m1, 1 divided by m2, and minus 1 divided by m2, multiplied by the entry kappa. And so you've written this in the form kappa times a matrix h1. And this is uh, the, the, the form that we were looking for. Um, so, so now what we do in the next part of the video is actually solve for the eigenvalues of this matrix exactly and then we'll see two different cases emerging one of the case when k1 divided by m1 is actually different from k2 divided by m2 which belongs to the class of non-degenerate non eigenvalues and another case where both of these are actually same which belongs to the case of a degenerate eigenvalues and, and we'll see how uh, one can be solved using regular perturbation and the other one requires the use of singular perturbation methods and, and many of the ideas that emerge from there so um so hope uh, you'll find these uh, these the next few videos interesting and uh, hope to see you soon thanks for watching